Welcome to a candidate forum featuring candidates for Rancho Cordova City Council. I'm Paula Lee, a member of the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the moderator for today's forum. This forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. The forum is being viewed live by an audience in the Sacramento Board of Supervisors Chambers and by a live cable television audience at home. It's also being taped for rebroadcast on Metro Cable Channel 14. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization of women and men established to promote political responsibility through informed, active participation in government. The League does not support, oppose, or evaluate political candidates or parties. Although our nonpartisan policy does not permit, it, permit endorsement of political candidates, we do, after care careful study, take positions on political issues. But today our mission is voter education for the voters in Rancho Cordova. The format for today's forum will be as follows. Each candidate will make a one and one half minute opening statement. Next. The candidates will respond to questions from our panel. The questions were submitted by the panelists and reviewed by League members. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to each question, and finally, each candidate will have one minute for a closing statement. In the interest of time and decorum, I ask our audience to hold all applause until the end of the forum. Now I would like to introduce the candidates who are running for Rancho Cordova City Council. On my right is Linda Budge, and on my la left, Dan Skoglund. Our questioners today are Loretta Kalb from the Sacramento Bee and Foon Ree, the Sacramento Bee's editorial board member. Thank you very much, all of you, for participating today. Now we're ready to begin. We drew for speaking order, and we will begin with an opening statement from Linda Budge. Thank you, League. Hello, Rancho Cordova. I'm here today to ask you to reelect me to the city council, to our city council. I've served you for eight years on the city council and been mayor twice. And I'm proud to sit here today in my All America City t-shirt most people don't realize that this is pretty much a 24-7 job. This is my third event today. But this t-shirt also symbolizes the change that we have brought to Rancho Cordova. When 77% of us voted to incorporate Rancho Cordova, we didn't vote to stagnate. We voted to change the direction that Rancho Cordova was going. We voted to change the physical, social, and, re and economic health of Folsom Boulevard. We've been tough on our absentee landlords who have ignored their properties for, in some cases, 10, 20, or 30 years. And we're very proud of that. We rode the wave of building and brought in new retail and remodeled old, but then the bottom dropped out. And so what we're focused on today is figuring out the strategies to jumpstart development in Rancho Cordova. We have a diverse economy and we work with our business, it develop, uh, businesses in the area to ensure that they thrive and survive. And that's what we'll continue to do. And I am here today, again, to ask you to elect me to your city council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Skoglund. Thank you, and thank you to the League for holding this forum today and the panelists for, uh, for the questions. Uh, my name is Dan Skoglin. I'm a 35-year resident of Rancho Cordova. For the last 25 years, I participated in all forms of uh, participation community-wise with uh, the, 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 the local uh, community. Uh, I have been a past president of the Rancho Cordova Rotary Club. Uh, I've been a planning commissioner on the city, uh, past president of the Cordova Community Council of the Active 2030 Club. Uh, and as a council member this year, I was the chairman of the correct count for the census 2010 for the city of Rancho Cordova. Um, I'm running to continue providing steady, balanced, thoughtful leadership 
so we can keep making Rancho Cordova a better place for our families. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve as your council member and mayor in 2009. What a wonderful experience it is to build a city that is our own. Um, to unite old with the new, and we excelled very well at that. I'm running on the record we've established, and I'm proud of the accomplishments we've, we've completed. We've done no less than redefine how a city can be run. Thank you. Okay, and we'll begin the questioning. Um, Foon Ree, will you direct your first question to Mr. Skoglund? Sure. Um, so as you know, one of the big uh, issues on the ballot um, in the city of Rancho Cordova is the one about um, attacks on uh, growth of marijuana for personal use. Um, can you explain your position on that and why uh, you think that's a good idea or bad idea? Uh, that, uh, that item has um, um, obviously been taking place in the, in the community as a medical issue uh, so far. Uh, we do not have any dispensaries, marijuana dispensaries in our city. And uh, I personally uh, did not, I was a dissenting vote to put it on the ballot. Uh, I don't really believe in the, the usage of it is beneficial to anybody. Uh, I've seen over the years in Ranch Cordova, the problems that it's created with people that are growing it uh, and causing neighbors problems, and it's a, it's a difficult situation at times where somebody thinks they're growing the right medicine, but they're intruding on their neighbor's uh, uh, peace, peacefulness, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's something I do not support in the city, and we do not have a medical dispensary, and I hope we don't ever have one. Thank you. Ms. Budge. Thank you. This, um, this does not imply that we support Proposition 19. It simply enables us to tax the people who are growing for their own personal use because we found this spring that when there are large grows in people's backyards in our neighborhoods, the entire area smells like marijuana growing. And that's really a problem. It is absolutely contrary to our Strong Neighborhoods Initiative. We also know that there are um, something like six other cities in California that are planning to tax marijuana. If other cities in our region do that, and we do not, then that means people will come to Rancho Cordova to buy their pot if we were forced to open a medical dispensary. We don't want any of that. We have been working for several years now to ensure that it doesn't impact our neighborhoods, and this initiative will help us do that. Thank you. Okay, Loretta Kolb, would you direct your question to Ms. Budge? Hi, Linda. Uh, the other uh, measure on the ballot, and you may have been alluding to it in your last answer, is um, t the uh, business uh, tax on businesses that open dispensaries. And um, so my question for you is, um, uh, does the city plan to devote all of the tax money to enforcement and regulation to those dispensaries if it passes? And um, does the city, would you support an effort for the city to commit to um, providing the funds also to law enforcement? And, and not other areas of city operations. Loretta, that's actually the way in which the, I believe that's the way in which the ballot measure reads. Um, again, because we have found that there are significant problems. We're concerned that there, that as so much, uh, so much of what we, the voters, pass gets, um, gets taken through court, and we don't really know how Prop 19 is going to be implemented once the courts get through with it. So we are ensuring that if we are ever forced to have dispensaries and for people who, um, who are selling it, whether it's, a res uh, whether it's a nonprofit or for profit, that there will be that money to specifically enforce, uh, uh, provide money for whatever law enforcement is needed, for whatever code enforcement is needed, to cure whatever problems that arise in the neighborhoods. Because as I said, we know what some of the problems are we just don't know what the uh, state courts are going to force us to do. Thank you. Mr. Skoglund. Uh, again, uh, I am obviously uh, against the use of marijuana in the city. Our city staff has done due diligence in, in, in having to look forward in case Prop 19 does go and pass. That way we will regulate, I think it's $18 per $1,000 of gross value 
uh, of, of sales in the city of Rancho Cordova. Uh, and I would hope that that would go for enforcement, code enforcement, and police enforcement for, um, for, for the, 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 the majority of that. Um, I, again, I never envisioned uh, having a marijuana dispensary in our all-American city. That just was not in my, my perception of an all-American city. So that's really the way I stand on it. Thank you. Fun Ray. Um, so one of the uh, big issues facing local governments um, are pensions and um, benefits and the cost of those and whether there's a way to make them more affordable and sustainable. Um, what would you support uh, specifically uh, in terms of pension reform, whether it's a two-tier system or other changes? Uh, in, a, in a fairly new city where we have maybe five retired annuitants, uh, I don't think we've actually faced the, the overall uh, aspect of a pension reform at this point in time. Um, obviously, I've seen uh, regional problems with it uh, throughout the county and uh, maybe other cities. But at this point in time, I don't think it's a problem with us as far as if, if it was, was to become a problem, uh, obviously uh, we would have to look closely about that and, uh, and look at um, uh, what would, we would do when uh, people did retire and uh, maybe look and see uh, what it would cost us in the long run if it kept up a certain trend or something like that. So, Ms. Budge? We have a very small city staff. We have not grown a huge bureaucracy. Um, our budget is balanced, and one of the ways in which we've done that is to keep our staff small. But the other advantage Rancho Cordova has, which is exactly the opposite of what you saw in places like Vallejo, is the fact that we don't have what are commonly, uh, commonly called legacy costs, because our sheriff's department is an, a contract with Sacramento County Sheriff, and uh, fire district services are brought to us by Metro Fire, and the park district services are brought to us by the Cordova Recreation and Park District. So the significant legacy costs of pensions and long-term uh, retirements that other organizations have just won't ever affect Rancho Cordova. Our employees um, have, um, I think it's, uh, they're, they're through PERS, and I believe it's what's called um, 2.7 percent at uh, uh, age 55, which is a really common PERS thing. But again, we don't have those legacy costs. Okay, Loretta Kolb, it's your turn to direct a question to Linda Budge. Okay. Um, you, you're familiar, I'm sure, with the Sacramento County discussion about the general plan south of Highway 50 uh, and what has been described as leapfrog development. And so I'm wondering what uh, strategy does the city have or would you put in place to address that with the county? Unfortunately, we have tried, our planning department has tried to address that with the county as the hearings have unfolded, and we have not been successful. Um, I, I represent the city on SACOG, our Council of Governments, and we, our general plan is a blueprint compatible plan. Unfortunately, Sacramento County's general plan that they are in the process of adopting is not. It does provide single purpose developments uh, solely residential in places where there are no services. They will, they will not result in um, co uh, cohesive communities where people can actually live, work, shop, recreate, do whatever they need to do close to home. It will exacerbate everyone's air pollution problems. This has been a non-attainment region for the entire 40, 45 years I've been in Sacramento, and it will only make things worse. Mr. Scogland. Um, I, I think you're referring to the county's uh, expanded urban policy update plan. And we've got to work very closely and watch, work very closely and watch very closely the county uh, trying to develop. And I think a capacity was something like 152,000 dwelling units, which will be around our, our, our sphere of influence, our city boundaries. That's a lot. and. And of course, that's over a 30-year period, too. But we have to really work with them. If this is going to take place, we have to work with them to make sure that the connectivity that we plan and the development that they help somebody else plan works for both, because we, we, we need to have 
infrastructure properly done, roads, the uh, bicycling and, and walking areas. We need to have, if something's gonna be just outside the boundaries of our city, it needs to be thoroughly looked at by us to make sure that it connects and does not leapfrog and, and, and show a difference between our city and the county. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Um, now it's Foon Rees opportunity to direct a question to Dan. Sure. Um, what's the biggest mistake that uh, you've made uh, on the city council in recent times and what would you have done differently? I think missing a couple meetings here and there uh, might have been mistakes, but, uh, but be, to be honest with you, um, um, I think uh, when I first started out, I had a learning curve because I was not a uh, city council member, I was appointed after somebody passed away. And uh, uh, in the f uh, studying the, uh, uh, the maybe the police contract a little bit more thoroughly when we first initiated that. And then uh, as far as, uh, if you're talking about stakes per personally for me or mistakes that the city may have done, I don't really see any state mistakes the city has done. For, for what, for our age, what we've accomplished is just incredible. We're the youngest ever city to obtain All-American City status. We've, we've survived the, 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 the closing of Mayfair Air Force Base. Uh, I don't think we made too many mistakes as a city. Personally, probably missing to a meeting here and there where I've had to catch up on. Thank you. Ms. Budge? Professionally, I'm an ur urban planner, a land use planner. And from my perspective, um, we, have not, we have not always paid enough attention to what our planning department has done. But that just happens to be my issue. We have had to deal for the last two years with a zoning code that was full of good ideas, but it didn't quite work out the way that we expected. And so when proper, property owners were informed, everyone was kept informed, and they all came to meetings and hearings, and um, nothing was done that, that people didn't know about. But when we began to implement it, or when they began to need to backfill retail spaces in their buildings, it created some problems. So we took immediate steps to fix it. We uh, worked with the people on Folsom Boulevard to ensure that they would have the flexibility that we've been striving to achieve for 15 years. And then we worked with the people in the Sunrise area to again bring that level of flexibility to them. So where there have been mistakes, we fix them. Okay. And Loretta Kalb, you can direct your question to Ms. Budge. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna follow up on your Folsom Boulevard mention. Uh, I have been um, looking, talking to some of the property owners in the area in the last week or so, and I'm finding that there's a fair amount of uh, distress over uh, the, um, the prospect that some areas of Folsom Boulevard will have residential uh, in places that they think may be inappropriate because of rezoning. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that's a very specific thing. And, and more broadly, more generally, uh, still after seven or eight years, and I'm not saying you should be performing more miracles than you already have, but still after seven uh, years of being a city, Folsom Boulevard is really um, the, the ugly stepchild of Rancho Cordova. So I would like you to address that as well. Folsom Boulevard has some wonderful highlights. At the chamber, we used uh, every drop of, of the um, uh, facade rebate money that we could get from Sacramento County. And we've continued that um, in, our, in our time as a city by remodeling the boulevard itself and the, the paper currently has the second phase of the streetscape master plan improvements in it. There will not be residential, there's a lot of misinformation out there, there will not be residential all throughout Folsom Boulevard. It will be mixed use. And where there are hubs around train stations, then we will have complete mixed use, the commercial nodes. In between the train stations, uh, in stretches of the boulevard where the retail is dysfunctional, the mixed use zoning allows them to put in residential if they choose to do that. But if they choose to keep their building the way it is and simply backfill the tenants, they can continue to do the retail in the lo current locations as long as they want. The current owners could continue, but if they sell the property, does that trigger uh, a different set of standards? 
No, the um, the rules change. The rules go into effect when the <coughs> use of the property changes, not when the ownership changes. Thank you, Mr. Skelkland. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with Linda on the uh, uh, her her explanation of what uh, the rules are for the uh, specific plan for Folsom Boulevard. But um, I, I d disagree with you saying that uh, Folsom Boulevard is an ugly stepchild because we have a Folsom Boulevard beautification project, which we're in the middle of, uh, which is is working very well. It's putting medium strips down in the middle of the boulevard. It's putting fencing down in front of businesses so people don't hop off light rail and try to run across the street, which they've been doing. Um, it's doing a lot of things to bring an old highway back mm -hmm. that used to be a highway. Highway 50 was Folsom Boulevard. How do you take an old highway and turn it into your downtown area, the main thoroughfare that goes through your city? You slowly do it. Um, we have light rail on the south side. It's a possibility of taking the, the power, power lines from SMUD there and undergrounding that possibly to even enhance the more beautification of Folsom Boulevard. So I think Folsom Boulevard is, is, our, is our jewel eventually that will basically come back and rebound and make it beautiful and uh, make more functional for people to use. Thank you. Time has flown by and it's time for closing remarks and we'll reverse the order and so for closing remarks we will begin with Mr. Skogland. Thank you. I know our city is in better shape than it's ever been before. Our budget is balanced, police officers are still on our streets and we've been recognized as a regional leader. At a recent forum in Rancho Cordova it was suggested that we somehow are no better off since our general plan was completed in 2006. I disagree with that. We've recovered from the closing of Mather Air Force Base. We've endured the aerojet employment downturn. We bought and renovated a beautiful building and made it into a city hall. We restored and brought dignity to the Kilgore Cemetery, our oldest, oldest uh, historical site in the city. We've improved garbage service and lowered the fees. We've established a new business enterprise zone that gives tax credits to employers. We've had eight straight balanced budgets and we survived the West, worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. I know we're better off than we were before. And with your continued support, we'll bring a better quality of life to Rancho Cordova residents and pave the way for a bright future in the region. Please uh, visit my website, www.scoglandforcitycouncil.com. Thank you. Thank you, and Ms. Budge. Dan is absolutely correct in what he has listed as accomplishments of the city. We're very proud of where we are at this point in time. But our biggest challenge for the future is truly to bring Rancho Cordova back from the, um, the doldrums that it's in. We are blessed with a very diverse business community. Um, we are one of three regional economic centers, and we need for those people to continue to thrive and to survive in this economy. Our, eco our, our employment uh, rate is down, well, I, the other way around, it's, it's a little high. But what we're working on is developing the strategies that will enable the home builders to continue to build, that will bring new retail, even, what we have, if, even from what we have. There's, there's not a day that our economic development and the city council is not working to bring a new grocery store to the 12,000 households that are south of Highway 50 without any direct access to groceries. We're in the trenches on a 24-7 basis for you, and I ask for your vote on November the 2nd. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. On behalf of the League of Women Voters and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission, I thank the candidates and our panelists for participating. I'd also like to thank all the volunteers who have made this forum possible. This forum has been designed to impart information to you, the voter, in accordance with our belief that a democratic government depends upon the informed and active participation of its citizens. We hope that the insights you have gained from this forum will aid you in making your decision. For voter information and rebroadcast times, please visit our Smart Voter website. It's www.smartvoter.org, O-R-G. Or the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County's website, which is www.lwvsacramento.org. 
The League of Women Voters is where hands-on work to safeguard democracy leads to civic improvement. Please vote on November 2nd and help make our democracy work. Good night.